Hello and welcome to Intermediate Finance. In this session, we are going to discuss the first chapter, the Canadian security industry. So overview of Canadian securities industry. So what is a security industry? So if you see, capital is required to function. For any economy, capital is very important for it to function. So what is capital? Capital is money. So in an economy, there are people who have money and there are people who want money. So people who have money are called as suppliers of capital or investors. People who want money are called as users of capital or borrowers. So the security market industry revolves around connecting these suppliers with users. So it connects suppliers of capital with users of capital. Now who can be supplier of capital? Supplier of capital can be an individual, it can be a big corporation, or it can be a government. So when an individual invests in a bank, in a stock, in any, in any instrument, he is becoming a supplier. right? Same way if a large corporation is investing in a stock, in a bank, etc., it is becoming a supplier. Same way if government is investing somewhere, so it is becoming a supplier of capital. Now who are users? Users are again an individual. So we can borrow or we can take part, we can give our money by purchasing shares or a corp large corporation can borrow or similarly a government can borrow. right? So users and suppliers are the same entities but they function in a different way. Suppliers of capital provide capital, users of capital use that capital. Now where do they use it? They use it for personal purpose or they use it for business or they use it for even running the government. So between suppliers of capital and users of capital there are there is investment dealers. So the function of an investment dealer is to connect this user of capital with supplier of capital so the function of investment dealer is to connect okay market is where the trading of capital happens so investment dealer helps user and suppliers to connect but where does the exchange of capital happen between suppliers and users it happens in a market then there is clearing and depository services Clearing means confirmation of a transaction and settlement means actual exchange. So if I buy a stock, how would it work? So I am buying a stock. So what am I doing? I am an investor because I am investing my money. So I am supplier of capital. Where does this capital go to? This capital may go to the corporation or it may go to some other investor who I am buying it from. So whatever is the reason. So I am buying a stock. Okay. So what will happen? My transaction will first go to an investment dealer. Investment dealer will try to find the user of capital because I am supplier. So it will try to find a user. It will try to find user of my capital. So once it found finds that user, the transaction will go to the marketplace. The marketplace may be a stock exchange. It may be a bank, whatever but the transaction will go to a marketplace from this marketplace once once the transaction is confirmed it goes to cds that is clearing and depository services clearing is matching of transactions and settlement is confirmation of transactions then since money is involved there should, should be some regulations in the market regulation is People who are checking whether the markets are functioning in a proper way. Regulation is where people or individuals or entities are checking whether the market is functioning in a proper way. So they are like police of the market. So if you see American markets, American market has a central agency called as SEC, Security Exchange Commission, that oversees the entire market. But in Canada, we have provincial entities. So each province has a different regulator. 
Now these regulator hand their function to something called as an SRO. SRO is an investment regulatory organization. So SRO is self-regulatory organization that handles in means regulations in a particular domain. Okay. So how does it work? In Canada, we have different provinces. So Alberta, Ontario, British Columbia, each province has a provincial regulator. This provincial regulator then delegates its authority to a SRO. The famous SRO is IR, IIROC, that is Investment Industry Regulatory Organization of Canada. It is an Ontario based organization. It is an Ontario based SRO that deals with security markets, that deals with securities. Then there is Canadian Investor Protection Fund. So this fund protects you from investment dealers going bust. So it doesn't protect your investment. So you have to be extremely careful. If you invest in a stock, it is not protecting your investment in a stock. It is protecting if you are buying that stock from let's say Scotia trade. So it is protecting you from Scotia trade going bust. So if Scotia trade files for bankruptcy, there is a certain protection given to an investor. So Canadian Investor Protection Fund protects an investor from the dealer, investment dealer going bankrupt. Then there is CSI, Canadian Security Institute. It's an education body. So in, in Canada, for being a participant into a security market, for being a dealer into a security market, there are certain educational qualifications and criteria that you have to meet. So these qualifications and criteria are maintained or are helped by CSI. So Canadian Security Institute provides the education part of the security market. So it educates the investors too and it educates the investment dealers too. Okay. Now investment dealer helps to trans helps in transfer of capital from users to suppliers from suppliers to users. So suppliers are people who are entities who have capital and users use that capital. So investment dealer helps to transfer this capital. They also support primary market. So there are two types of market, primary and secondary. We'll discuss more about it in the further sessions, but currently a high level remark. In primary market, you buy the security from directly the source. So if example, if you're trading in a primary market of Apple stock, so you are buying stock directly from the source that is Apple. So you're buying stock from Apple company. Okay. So you give money to the source that is Apple is getting money and you're getting stock. So this is a primary market transaction. Secondary market transaction is once the primary markets are established, then individuals trade within themselves. So one investor is buying stock. Another investor is selling stock. So Apple is not involved. The source is not involved. So entities trade within themselves. That is called as the secondary market. So primary market is when you buy from the source. Secondary market is you when you buy from another investor. So source is not involved. So investment dealers support primary market. They are involved in certain primary market transactions like underwriting and they majorly support primary market by keeping the secondary market alive. So secondary market transactions majorly happen through investment dealers. So this secondary market is important for functioning of primary market. For example, if you were not able to sell Apple stock to another investor, would you ever invest in Apple stock in a primary market? So I buy stock from Apple in primary market and there is no secondary market involved. So there is no trading that happens. So even if Apple is appreciating, I'm not able to sell that stock ever. 
so would i be involved in primary market then no so secondary markets are important because they provide liquidity for primary market so investment dealers are important because they help in secondary market type of investment dealers are retail firms and institution firms retail firms cater to small investors and institutional firms cater to large investment corporations now how is an investment dealer organized so investment dealer is organized as there is senior management so there is there would be a ceo cfo chief marketing officer etc so this senior management oversees all of the organization so there are directors associate directors executive vice president all these comes in senior management they oversee the entire functioning of the investment dealer then the investment dealership is divided into front office middle office and back office so front office is involved with the customers it is dealing with customers so it is a front facing role so it includes portfolio management it includes trading it includes sales and marketing so these four things are involved in front office portfolio management trading sales and marketing what do you have to remember that they deal directly with customers middle office is something that provides support to front office so it is compliance accounting audits and legal and back office is where transactions are settled so trade settlement happens in back office so front office deals with customers middle office provides support to the front office as well as back office so compliance accounting audits and legal services and back office is where the transactions are settled now if you see financial intermediaries they basically function in two ways dealers and brokers dealers are called as principals and brokers are called as agents okay so how does it work so if you see currency markets in bank they are majorly dealer based so what what is dealer based market dealer based is where the dealer actually buys something keeps it in his account keeps it in his inventory and then sells it so the principal or the dealer is becoming a principal for buying something i'll give you an example if you walk into let's say royal bank of canada you want to buy us dollars so what do you see you see two rates one is buying rate and one is selling rate so what is rbc doing rbc is having an inventory of us dollars so it is buying us dollars at let's say 1 canadian dollars and selling us dollars at 1.2 canadian dollars what is its income its income is 20 cents that it is making that is the difference between buying and selling prices so primary dealers or principal dealers they buy and sell okay so they have an inventory they buy stuff they keep it in inventory and then they sell stuff they make profit when they buy at lower rate and sell at a higher rate they make loss when they buy at a higher rate and sell at lower rate okay brokers are different so real estate is a brokered market so if you want to purchase an condo in kensington how would it work you go to a real estate broker real estate broker shows you the place and if you like it you buy it not from the real estate broker but from the actual buyer so what is real estate broker doing real estate broker is facilitating the transaction or meeting between buyer and seller so important point brokers do not carry inventory they just facilitate meeting of buyers and sellers okay other services that investment dealers provide is inform advice so when you go to a dealer he advises whether to buy a stock whether to buy a bond or he provides important research right 
so it makes you informed so one of the jobs of investment dealers is informed advice then it adds liquidity because it is providing liquidity to primary market so it is adding liquidity to primary market it they are, they can be market makers market makers is they buy large quantities of stock and okay market makers is they connect bit they are a connection between buyers and sellers so they make markets if investment dealers are not there then buyers and sellers would have extreme difficulties in meeting each other so they function as a market maker then they buy as principal so they buy large amount of stock so they provide they provide an option for an a supplier to sell his stock and then they provide the stocks to individual investors so they buy as principals and they help primary market also by establishing liquidity so important things they provide inform advice they add liquidity they are market makers they buy as principals and they help primary market to raise funds other financial intermediaries except from investment dealers are chartered banks so same way banks work on deposit and credit so you go to a bank you deposit your money so bank takes that money and gives out loan to someone else okay the difference between what it pays to a depositor and what it charges from a loan is its income so the main job of bank is to collect capital and to package it out as loans so in canada we have banks we have chartered banks that are divided in according to different schedules so there are schedule 1 chartered bank schedule 2 chartered banks and schedule 3 so schedule 1 chartered banks are canadian owned banks so these are banks that are owned by canadians so all big six banks royal bank of canada scotia bank then td bank all these big six banks are schedule 1 banks they are canadian owned banks schedule 2 bank is a bank which is not canadian owned it's a foreign subsidiary of a foreign bank so let's say hsbc hsbc is a foreign bank it is based out of uh, london but it has subsidiaries in canada so it works as a canadian bank but it is owned by a foreign subsidiary so schedule 2 banks are non canadian bank subsidiaries of foreign banks schedule 3 banks are retail branches of foreign banks so they they do not they are not allowed to do everything what schedule 1 and schedule 2 schedule 1 and schedule 2 are exactly same so rbc can give out loans take credits issue credit cards deal in investment same way hsbc can also do that hsbc canada can also do all the functions of schedule 1 so there is very less distinction between 1 and 2 but there is a large distinction between 1 2 and 3 so schedule 3 banks are can do only a certain functions they cannot do all functions that banks do and they are just retail branches of foreign banks they are not entire banks as a whole they are just retail branches of foreign banks bank of china for example has branches in canada so it is just a schedule 3 bank then we have credit union or also known as casi popularis so credit unions were started to provide financial needs of union members so if you are let's say you belong to the lumber union association and uh, you are involved in the lumber industry so there was an union that helped you in financial decisions like loans and deposits and etc but later on these union extended themselves so they are not only restricted today from providing services to their own union members but they have expanded their services to non union members also and credit unions are increasing at a good rate in canada because they provide 
services that are similar to the banks and sometimes better than the banks so they provide much more personalized service and the rates are sometimes more beneficial than banks so they are increasing at a faster rate then there are trust and loan companies so trust uh, investment trust handle money on behalf of an investor so mutual funds are major criteria means category here loan companies provide loans then there are insurance company insurance is divided into life and non life life insurance is majorly um, as it suggests insurance on a person's life as well as health and non life insurance is everything else like auto insurance house insurance consumer durable insurance iphone insurance etc other financial intermediaries are investment funds so they are like mutual funds so they invest on behalf of investors then etb so alberta treasury branch so this bank was started to provide services to rural areas because in past major banks had started to pull out from rural areas so rural areas were unbanked so etb was established to uh, give services to rural areas then there is consumer finance companies that finances your mobile purchases your tv purchases etc sales finance that provides finance to auto companies and then there are pension funds so these are the other financial intermediaries banks schedule 1 schedule 2 schedule 3 credit unions trust and loan companies insurance companies and other and others now what are the trends in financial market so trends in financial market is lot of technology is coming in so we are moving into a fintech kind of world so in fintech if you see five major things are happening so blockchain is getting involved so cryptocurrencies and blockchain is changing how currencies are traded or how transactions happen then there is artificial intelligence coming in big data and cloud computing coming in so all these changes a b c d if you see they are changing how finance works so this is called as fintech a major fintech revolution means it's happening in in china so in china if you see there are a lot of uh, p2p means person to person lending it is called as p2p lending so it's around if you see that's called as the shadow banking industry of uh, china shadow banking in china is currently around 10 trillion dollars with p2p people to people lending makes about 1 trillion dollars of that so it's a big industry then there are robo advisors robo advisors is where there is you get advice from an artificial intelligence rather than from an person so instead of asking your investment questions to a person you ask to a particular system and in canada we have shifting demographics so shifting demographic means that canadian population is aging so services that are more in tuned to this aging populations are going to increase so services like extended health care in the retirement then retirement plans then retirement uh, pension investments all these are going to rise because the demographic population of canada is aging so that was chapter 1 so we'll catch up in chapter 2